Here we have a dynamically balanced tone arm. And let me show you what that means first. Now, I'll tell you what, here we have a uh, dual 505 turntable, um, which is a, uh, actually it's a really nice turntable to show you how to do this. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the dust cover so we can see a little better. Um, what they mean by uh, dynamically balanced is here you have um, an adjustment that adjusts the weight at the pivot point and you have a counterbalance that offsets the weight of the photo cartridge. So, let's see how we we'll balance that. First thing we do is we'll bring this to zero. And the, uh, this weight here, which is the counterweight, um, oh, you see when we bring it over right now, the, the uh, turntable is turning. So I don't, I'm going to unplug it for now to stop that, so we don't have that in the weight. And also you'll notice that the arm itself is being pulled over to the um, outside of the record, and that's due to the anti-skating. Um, so I'm going to set that to zero, and you'll notice when I do that, the arm, the arm is um, much more stationary, or is stationary. So, first thing we want to do is, is you notice how, you can tell right now how the uh, counterweight is much heavier than the cartridge. You want it level. Um, so like a seesaw effect, actually. So what I'm going to do is, uh, let's turn this weight here. And you notice what's happening now on this turntable, and, and there's a cueing lever. So I'm going to drop that down. And so I, don't ha I can get the full range. So that's obviously too heavy. So now what we're going to do here is we'll balance it correctly by turning this weight until it's level. Let's see what that looks like. Yep, still too heavy, just by a hair. And um, that's it right there. That's level. And what that means is that the weight of the counterbalance is now the same, applying the same force as the uh, phono cartridge. So that is now balanced. Now we need to add the weight. And the way you add the weight is by, you, you need to look at the directions for the particular phono cartridge you're using. And there's usually a range. And uh, most of the time I go in the middle. Um, of that range. If I'm using test records, I can actually see that on my oscilloscope and at that point I could um, adjust it further. So in this case, this is a, an Autophon OM10 and I'm going to track that at 1.75. So on the gauge here, we have 1 gram, 1.5 gram, and right there is 1.75. So what I'm going to do, and you don't really need to do this, but you know, if you have it, it makes more sense to do this than not. And it's just to be very precise. So I'll bring this over, drop my cueing lever down, and I set my gauge, so it's at 1.75. And in this case, you can see it's a hair bit heavy. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to bring it down just a little bit, and we'll see what it is now, just so you can see how it works. And you can see here, if you look closely in the mirror, you'll see how these two line up, and that is 1.75, exactly. So, that part is done. So now, we have it, we have the, 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 the right amount of weight, or tracking force, on the record. Um, then back to the anti-skating. Right now, obviously, it's set at zero, and we need some anti-skating, because without the right amount of anti-skating, the way the record is cut and spinning, they found that it wants to track in. So it puts much more pressure on the inside of the groove. And, um, and that will cause mistracking um, in the uh, mid and high frequencies. So what you do is they have anti-skating, which pulls it back out towards the edge. And you, wanna, you need to apply the, um, the, um, the right amount. And um, there is a range and if you're using test records again, you can set it precisely. But for this particular demonstration, um, we're going to um, set it um, in a recommended fashion. Now, the way they recommend this is from the um, directions on the turntable. They would say wherever you set the actual weight is where you should set the anti-skating. I find setting that about a half a gram 
higher is more accurate. So in this case, I have it at 1.75. I'm going to set the anti-skidding at um, one at, at 2.25 or two and a quarter, and um, that will be the um, I think much more accurate than than at 1.75. Um, also on this turntable, since so it's a dual 505, there is another thing you can do on this turntable, and uh, let me show you that. We actually uh, need a record to do this. So uh, we'll get a wrench here, and uh, we're going to plug it back in. And now we'll start it turning. And uh, when we drop it down, it plays. You can hear it in the background there playing. The cool part about this is, um, on this particular turn deal with this tone on, is as I bring it up, and I have to bring it slowly not to bump it, but it will continue to play the record. That must be about 45. I don't, I can, I'll probably, the record will probably fall off. But I can continually hold it like this and it will play. And um, it'll also do it on the, um, the other way as well. It's kind of cool. I'll show you. I'll go up the other way. Just, I don't know if the camera will pick this up. Let's take a look. And we'll go up on this side. And it'll do the same thing. And there you go. That's how you balance a uh, dynamically balanced arm. Thank you for watching.